Here we go, live from the City of Angels on this Thursday night. It is Ghostbusters. Frozen Empire reaction just got out of the theater, and I'm kind of conflicted. Listen, I expected not to like this film, but as I go through what I like and dislike about this second sequel that we've gotten, you know, back-to-back really in the last, what, three years, we've had two Ghostbuster movies, and when you look at Afterlife and you look at Frozen Empire, for me right now, sitting through this film, There's no question that this is a better film than Afterlife for a lot of reasons. But let's detail what those are. We're going to talk about box office prediction on this, as well as someone claiming this is the worst movie of the year. What? What? How? Is this the only film you've seen? There's no way in hell that this Ghostbusters Frozen Empire is the worst film of 2024 zero percent chance i mean it's insane to even send that statement out okay here's what works here in this film not directed by jason reitman this time written and directed actually written by him along with his partner he let his partner direct this thing and the first thing i want to point to before i get into the real meat and potatoes of what works and what doesn't is that When you talk about any film, the number one thing you have to have is capable direction. And right here, right now, I'm here to tell you, this film has capable direction. Madam Web does not have capable direction. It's shit direction. If you can't see that, if you can't notice this shit, and we're going to call someone out here momentarily, then you need to get out of the business. Like You need to physically remove yourself from the movie space because it's obvious. You can see these things. They're right there. Let's talk about what works here in addition to competent enough. Certainly, I would say direction slight plus, right? For what it is. Remember, when we talk about this film, we're talking about the film it's trying to be. This is not trying to be an awards film. This is trying to be a Ghostbusters film, and as such, it is better than Afterlife. Here's why. You've got a strong cast. I think Camille Nujani, without question, adds to this film. When you put him in a film, you get energy. You get humor. The guy just is funny. There's something about him I like. You put him in one, you're going to like the film. It's going to add to it. That's what you get here. Also, how can you dislike Paul Rudd? Even in Afterlife, right? If I was to pick one thing I liked about that film, it's Paul Rudd. It's always Paul Rudd. Remember, one of the few Ant-Man 3 sympathizers out there. So Rudd works, and he works here as well. But you also talk about the return of the Ghostbusters. How important is it to have Ackroyd back, Murray back? You have everyone in their seats. And even if Murray's not in the film long, and he isn't, it doesn't matter. The fact that he's here and he's in at least a couple of scenes adds to the film. So, yes, the nostalgic notes are hit here. Whether it is new material or clearly is not, you still have nostalgia bait, no question. But it has to work, and I think it works largely enough here because of a couple things first the cast without question when you return them all you are going to have a ghostbusters film we didn't have that right and the other reason we didn't have that with afterlife it's so obvious how do you not see this shit you cannot set a ghostbusters movie in iowa and expect it to be as good as a ghostbusters film in the Big Apple. So we're back, and that's why this film easily is better. If there's someone out here who tells you that Frozen Empire is worse than Afterlife, you have my permission, as always, whenever we do one of these things, we have a reaction, you have my permission to tell them they know nothing and they can never speak on a film ever again. This is a stronger film. Is it great? No. God, no. This film is not at all. There is sluggish pacing. This film takes forever to get moving. There's no sense of urgency in the storytelling. He comes in at 155. I'd crush it down to 140. 15 minutes easily can be extracted from this film. No question. A lot of scenes run too long, but it's not enough to destroy the film. There's also not a whole lot of great laughs. There's a few jokes here and there, but otherwise it's not like you're going to go in this thing and start bursting a gut. You're not going to start losing it over this film. There's nothing in this film that's great except for Kumail. I think he is by far the highlight of this film. And ultimately, listen, this is. it sounds like I'm going to trash the film. It rides the mid. I mean, it largely rides the mid, but 
for the reasons I detailed the first three thumbs up. That is why we are thumbs up on this film. When you have a good cast, a strong cast, you have Kumail nailing his part, you have a return to the Big Apple, and you have nostalgia, all that factor, all that's going to work enough to get a recommendation for me. And again, remember this, when we are evaluating these films, we are putting them up against what they're trying to be. This is, as I said to start the stream, this is a Ghostbusters movie. You guys, if you are looking for something more than what you get out of this film, I don't know what you want. To say that we needed another one, no, of course not. Did Sony make another one? Because, yes, they saw a path to make some more cash, of course. But it's not a blatant cash grab where I'm like, get me the hell out of this. I enjoy this more than Dungeons & Dragons, okay? Better film. It's a better film than a lot of these films. They get all these raves. So I don't know what's going on. When I read these reviews, and let's pull it up right now, and then we'll get into the sales and we'll get into box office. If you saw the film, I know a lot of you haven't seen it. The sales don't look that great for this film this weekend. We'll talk about it in a minute, but I want to bring up this because this is what I was going into it thinking, what happened here? Because I actually follow Donald Clark. I think Donald's a pretty good movie critic. I think he's had a bad day because he says, Ghostbusters Frozen Kingdom is the worst film I've seen this year, and I've seen Madam Web. Donald, let me talk to you for a minute, sir. If you think that Ghostbusters Frozen Empire is a worse film than Madam Web, which is laughably horrible and terrible direction and a screenplay that makes you go, what? When the girls are dancing on the table to Toxic? What? There's nothing in Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. You're like, what? It all fits in the service of the stupidity of the Ghostbusters. Busting ghosts and putting them in traps. I mean, what, what do we want here? This is such an erroneous tweet. It's it's definitely Donald was pissed this day. It's not that bad. There's no chance in hell. Did anyone see this movie? Come in and let's do it. Thank you, Matthew, for being a new member. Up until today, I walked out of five movies. Now it's six. What'd you walk out of? Did you walk out of this? It's listen, you should have stuck around because I will admit the first like hour is slow. It's a slog. The pacing definitely is not advantageous for the moviegoer. But by the time we get to the end, we get Murray, we get them all back in the suits, and they're, you know, putting the ghosts in the traps with their echo black, whatever the, the gun thing is. I'm not some kind of religious zealot. I'm not love these. I don't love the Ghostbusters. I didn't grow up with the Ghostbusters watching this film every year reminding me about the value of it. No, I watch Gremlins over and over, Home Alone, you know, the real... Uh, Ghostbusters is not even a classic to me. It's an 80s film, but is it a classic? I, I, I would not say that. But I had enough fun with this film. You should have stuck around. I booked Frozen Empire and 40X. Hopefully, I can totally amplify the experience uh, because you've got the what? The moving seats? Yeah, I mean, listen, you might as well. I saw it in Dolby. It, it, it's the kind of film you want to see in a big screen, loud. There's parts of this film that sound great, like when they bring the evil, malevolent spirit back at the end, and you get that really rumbling bass going on. You want to be in a theater. It's not going to be the same at home. Uh, but again, guys, it's a 75% here. Let's not, let's not lose our minds over what I'm saying is a fine film. I, it's acceptable. Let's look at sales, and then I'll get into the projection of what I think this thing's going to do this weekend. This is the 8 o'clock. Just went off moments ago at the same theater I was just in moments ago. And you can see it's about, what would that be, about 80% full? Not bad, but, you know, listen, this is not going to be a massive opening weekend because, you, you know, listen, you go back to Afterlife, which is 2021, correct? Three years. That's not long enough to build up, oh my God, another Ghostbusters movie. I feel like Sony could have waited at least another year. You need time between these things. When you give me a Jurassic Park, a Jurassic World, whatever you want to call it now, I need some time. I need a refractory period. And I don't think we hit the refractory period for Ghostbusters, so that's why this film is not going to do as well as the last one. My number's coming up in a moment. Let's go to Universal and check this thing, 8 o'clock prime, and see what we've got going on over there. Looks like it's about 75 80%. First two rows are not full, but otherwise pretty good. I mean, this is a very average Thursday night, what I'm seeing. Let's go and see if we can go over to Beverly Hills to the Century City. 
and check out what's going on there. And here it is, 9 o'clock IMAX looks like this. And I don't think I even have the right one up. There it is. You can see it. Uh, it's not great, right? There's a lot of empty seats and good seats. This is not going to be a huge opening weekend, guys. I'm going to put this thing at, let's go with 40. 40 million is below where we ended up on the first one at 44. When I say first one, Afterlife, not the remake with all the women. In fact, I just, I want to go on record. I never even saw that film. So, Please do not ask me to compare Ghostbusters with 2016 with I didn't even bother. I heard it and I said, I'm just not going to. I told you guys, this isn't like if, you, if you're asking me, let's revitalize an 80s franchise. I would never pick Ghostbusters. It'd be like, it's it's fine. It's fine. It's not something I would be overly excited about. Right. Uh, there's a couple dozen LOL moments in the original Ghostbusters. There's more certainly than there are here, Braxter. But uh, there's the, the one thing I will say is. The, the one time that I actually kind of laughed along with the film more than anything, and I haven't seen him that much in movies. I know he's just in one, a small film that I didn't get a chance to see, was Pat Oswalt. He's got a nice little scene here where he is in a library and he's got some funny little bits when he gets down there and shows them all, you know, what's actually coming to kill New York. He's solid, and again, Kumail. So the two of them add. Remember, whenever you're talking about a film that's riding the mid, you're looking for anything that'll push it above, right? Anything that's going to get you like, okay, here we go. This is a spark. I need this. I need Patton to do this. I need Kumail to do that. Because the rest of them, listen, aside from Paul Rudd, Finn Wolfhard is whatever. He doesn't do anything for me. The kid, Logan Kim, this kid's a, the kid who plays podcasts, fucking annoying. That kid is so annoying. I mean, literally, that's where I, I, that kid needs, to, I, I need to put him away for a while. He, I don't, I hope it's not, that's his thing. He's, he's the worst part of the movie. Every time he shows up, that's why I didn't like Afterlife. He's even more in this. So every time he's on the screen, I'm like, oh, like, you know, have you ever seen that where they actually have like a meter that they, they, where they watch when you watch a movie or watching something, they can gauge your emotions as you watch. As soon as Logan Kim started talking, I'd be like, oh, fuck. <laughs> And then Kumail came on. I'm like, Kumail's on. Awesome. Thumbs up. Ah, Logan again. It's just uh, not, doesn't work. Kid doesn't work. Uh, 75% filled for the 345 here in San Diego. Yeah, listen, I said this. Look, let me pull in my reaction tweet. And it's exactly what I just told you guys. Obviously, I expanded a bit on it. This is, this is it right here. Uh, listen, I'm pleasantly surprised here as Ghostbusters Frozen Empire is a definite improvement on Afterlife. It is. No question about it. It's all the requisite nostalgic notes. Uh, general audiences are going to be happy with the film. And is it great? No, but there's no way in hell it's the worst film of 2024. Like we said to Donald, what are you talking about? Slight recommend. I mean, it's it's fine. It's it's what it is. And I think most people are going to enjoy the film. And listen, I think it, it's weird. Sometimes when I see a film, I want to see it through the lens of the audience that's going to watch the film, right? I, I don't want to go into a Ghostbusters film with the lens of hardcore awards, you know, prognosticator going into this and going, what does this film do and where can it shape up in what category? No, nah, man, this is a popcorn entertainment film for the families. There's very little in here that's going to offend any kids. There's a little bit of a lesbian romance thing going on, but it's it's kind of overt, right? So it's not like Disney. Uh, it's It's a little less obvious. And so I think overall families are going to enjoy the film. People are not going to go hard on this. I, the critics, for whatever reason, I'm going to pull a few of them up because sometimes I, I look at the critics and I and I don't understand because a, a lot of them remember this. A lot of critics are chin stroking dweebs, right? We've said it so many times. They are chin stroking. Oh, what have I learned from this? Shut the fuck up. You don't speak for any. They don't they don't speak to anybody. Right. You know, the same ones who told you poor things was a masterpiece. Those those critics. Forty five percent's too low. Listen, I'd give it a fresh, but it's 75 is low. It's like right on the border for me. It's better than Afterlife and Afterlife's at 64. So I don't know what's going on here. Let me just look at a couple of reviews here. Uh, Sarah Michelle Fetters with Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Busting still makes me feel good. I agree. I, I agree with you. Um, Kyle Smith, Wall Street Journal, who sometimes I agree with, a blunt Gen X nostalgia play, a tribute act, grinding out the oldies on a cruise ship nowhere. I didn't listen. It's not inspired. No one's saying that, Kyle, but it's it's serviceable. It is absolutely serviceable, and that is the thing. Is especially when you get Murray Aykroyd, you have the Hudson. 
it, you have what's her name coming back. You've got all four. You've got you know kind of a, a, a really a tribute to Ivan Reitman, who as you guys know passed away recently in the last couple of years. And they were writing the script. Jason, his son, obviously writing it with the guy who directed this, and they let him look at it. and He was happy with it. I could see why he would be. It's true to the heart of the Ghostbuster franchise. Whatever you want to you know, whatever you feel about it. Ultimately, does the product that's on the screen you're watching work within the original's soul, okay? And if it does, then it's going to be a positive for me. As long as it's not a shit show, it could have the right soul and be a terrible film. But this is not. This is neither of those things. There's no question there's too many characters. Uh, I'm not going to, again, listen, like I said, there's a lot of things to work on here, but I, I'm telling you, you, just wait. The average person is going to go see this movie and go, it's fine. I have no no problem. Afterlife destroys itself two-thirds in. I agree. It's not a great film, and I remember coming out of that film and having to listen to like Menzel say it's one of his favorite movies of the year. What the f- did This? Afterlife? Remember, how can you say Afterlife is better when it's in Iowa? How is a Ghostbusters movie in Iowa without Bill Murray? With very little Dan Aykroyd, he's in it for like a minute. Was Hudson even in it? How do you say that's better than this? The problem is, is that it took juice out of what this could have been. If there were no afterlife, you could have actually just written this and it would have been received better because we wouldn't have just done this. But this is a better film. The problem is it had a subpar film before it and you're carrying that energy into it. So you had to somehow get past that and it does get past that and just enough it's a marginal recommendation by no means is this a great film but it's also not terrible it's a better film than afterlife i'm telling you again and then i'm going to do a couple other things and roll out of here to be a tight stream tonight anybody who says this film is worse than afterlife it's done there's nothing there's there is no fucking way to ever regain trust in ever it, it's over there's certain things you can't be wrong about guys you can't be wrong about some of these things like this is a they're neither one's great but this is a better film you can't miss that you it's just like you 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 go what you physically go is there something wrong with you that you can't see it's not even like this is even something up for debate it's not like oh i understand how you feel this way this is a stronger film period it's not no debate we're not even going to have it we're exactly correct that's what drives me crazy and then they're going to go back and revisit it and say well it's better yeah because 2016 never saw it i'm sure it wasn't great you can't do that we don't why why do people do that we don't judge movies on the past. When I went into this movie, I didn't like Afterlife. I slight I completely wiped the slate clean. You don't go into a movie. Remember, you just wipe it. When I go see the next Bong movie, when I see Tarantino's next movie, when I saw Dune 2, I wipe the slate. You start over. I didn't like Dune 2 as much as Dune 1. You cannot carry this shit over. It starts over every single fucking movie. I, these people that don't understand that concept, you need to get out of the space. You need to leave. Exit. The door's there. Leave. We're not doing this. We're not carrying things over. We're not going, this was bad, and because that was bad, this is better. No, it's just this movie on its own is a better film than Afterlife. It's insane to me. It's insane to me how people miss this shit. It, it absolutely drives me crazy. All right, uh, quickly, and then we're going to roll out of here because I said I don't want to even do 30 minutes tonight. Uh, free for all. Any questions you have, go. That's going to be it for Ghostbusters Frozen Empire for me tonight. We'll talk about it this weekend on Sunday Night Spectacular. Any other quick questions on the way out of here, go. Come in right now. We'll do it. Yes, I watched the trailer for Beater Juice. I saw it today. I'm not, again, same thing. Beetlejuice is a movie that I was fine. You know, listen, I don't think about Beetlejuice now in 2024 ever so someone tells me they're making another beetlejuice fine i'm not excited guys i don't i there's certain i'm you have to build you have to love the original of something to think ab- about getting a sequel now in 2024 and be excited about it 
it's fine. Beetlejuice was fine. Do I think it is anything that I, again, have I thought about Beetlejuice from the day I saw that movie back in, what was it, 90? What movie was that? Was it 89, 88, whatever, somewhere in there. I have not thought about Beetlejuice since that year. So you ask me to have an excitement level about a sequel to a movie I haven't thought about since 1989, 90? It, tell me I'm right. Please say I'm right about 89. I'm praying I'm right. Is it 88? Shit. I don't think it's 87. I think it's 88. 80. That's the thing. Is like these people get all excited. I'm like, what? Why? Upcoming horror film you're excited to see. Uh, I want to see that movie, uh, Late Night with the Devil. I, I, I wanted to see it tonight, but I wanted to get Ghostbusters out of the way because there are people saying it's the worst movie ever. I'm like, what? The worst movie of the year? Like, I need to get out. And when I see stuff like that, I need to see the film because I'm like, what are we doing here? That's that's aggressive. That is that is really rough. This can't be that bad. And it's not. So I have to see that. Late Night with the Devil, I can't wait to see because I love the concept. I love found footage. Always do. I think they almost unilaterally work. I don't care. I don't think I've seen one that's terrible. Even oh, okay, I'm sorry. Malibu horror story. It's really awful. You don't even know what I'm talking about if I tell you that movie. So you look at a horror film I'm excited about that. I mean, horror's the best thing going today. I, I love horror as long as it's not strap them to a chair and torture porn, right? I don't want to see that. I don't want to see human centipede. I, I do want to see immaculate. Yes. Thank you. Um, good. The ending's brutal. Then I'm all for it. I'm hundred percent for it. I'm looking forward to seeing both those. In fact, that's a list this weekend, late night with the devil. I think that's what it's called, right? And immaculate. So it's a one, two horror punch. We'll talk about the Sunday. So really you look at it, you had the supernatural triple threat this weekend. You had ghostbusters, you got devil and you've got immaculate. So you so listen, everybody wins this weekend. I hope this weekend is big for all these films. I mean, listen, the late night with the devil is not going to be a huge smash. Obviously, S Sweeney's going to bring butts to the seats for that immaculate. So that's important. I mean, it's a neon film. Maybe it gets to five million. Could it get past that? I mean, I know that sounds really low, but neon movies do not traditionally get above that number. It's very rare. And I think Ghostbusters, again, I'm going to put it at 40. I would take the under on that, though, not the over. In other words, 40 is the, the ceiling, and I would go under on that. So under Afterlife, because we just lived Afterlife. We just did it. That's why Ghostbusters aren't, aren't as exciting. Um, yeah, I'm excited to see it. We'll definitely talk about <laughs> – don't make me relive, relive Imaginary. It was wild. Um, the ending's actually where it gets like – Literally like, whoa, okay, you're going to do this shit? The Sweeney twins put butts in seats. I believe that's true. We'll find out when we talk about the numbers on Sunday morning. Back here, live from L.A. for Breaking Box Office. Sunday night, long show, hour long. We'll talk about box office. More of you will see this film. We'll talk about Ghostbusters and all the rest that's going on in the world of film. As always, thanks for being here. Live from L.A., the microphone is off. Peace out.